Welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories from Significant Entrepreneurs. And I'm Fran McNeil. In the studio with me this afternoon is Barton Brown, co-owner of Little Baby's Ice Cream. And we have some sample packaging here. No, you won't get ice cream today, but we're going to tell you where you can find Little Babies. Martin, welcome to the show. Hi. Thank Hi. you. Oh. Glad to be here. Oh, glad to have you here. Well, I always like to start out high energy and understand the significant story behind what got you started as an entrepreneur. Would love for you to share that. Sure. Uh, well, the 15 some odd years before be making ice cream, uh, mm -hmm. I was making music. Um, that's mm -hmm. what brought me to Philadelphia to come to school to study music. And um, I did that for a long time. It was a lot of fun. And then I reached a point where I felt like I needed a little bit of a career change. I was mm. sort of hitting a wall. And I um, needed a new creative outlet. And okay. that uh, got channeled into um, just kind of making cooking dinner at home, buying a bunch of kitchen gadgets. My favorite gadget being the ice cream machine, realizing it's sort of a blank slate. It's a mm -hmm. clean clean slate, blank canvas for creativity, and um, just sort of became obsessed with it the same way that I was obsessed with music before that and uh, became a passion. Started out as a hobby, making mm -hmm. it with some friends of mine that also just really enjoyed eating and making ice cream. Mm -hmm. um, realized that there was a niche in Philadelphia that we might mm -hmm. be able to fill in the um, sort of booming craft artisanal product and food truck world. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we decided to take that risk and um, kind of hustled and bustled the way that musicians and artists do and turn that hobby into a business. That is cool. Yeah. Take me back it, when you were into music. What what kind of music? What did you play? Um, I where, where did you? Where were your gigs? Yeah, you know, that um, kind of stuff. I came to Philadelphia to study at the University of the Arts, where I got a degree in jazz trumpet, and mm -hmm. then I got a master's degree in music education. So I was teaching private lessons. I was playing jazz gigs. I was playing wedding bands. Um, I was in an indie rock band for a really long time. And that was sort of when I put all my energy into that, and it didn't—I didn't become a rock star. That ah. I uh, <laughs> decided to become a rock star in the ice cream world. I love <laughs> it. I love it. And and jazz is a wonderful metaphor in yeah. business, you know. And you, you talked about the hustle and bustle, um, and the clean slate. Jazz yeah. is a lot about taking. You know something that is known, and then improving off of that. Sure, always um, making something new. Yeah. That's definitely something that we try to do. Mm -hmm. I feel that we've really kind of captured the the uh, discipline and creative energy and the constant need to self promote that mm -hmm. we had as musicians, aka into, the trumpet, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I just into uh, <laughs> you know making our business work, and mm -hmm. those are those are skills that I think uh, I couldn't have done this without. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me a little bit more about these boxes. What do they represent and what yeah. goes in them? Uh, well, these boxes are our uh, new, newly designed uh, pint packaging. Mm -hmm. um, Let's hold them up a little bit. Sure. There. They okay. are um, actually all paper, 100% recyclable, repulpable paper. So there is no polyethylene coating on these. Um, they're still completely food safe. There's a new technology called EnShield that is coating them, which is 100% biodegradable. So these are, uh, I believe, the first type of product on the market like this where you can rinse this out once you're done eating your ice cream and mm. throw it in your um, paper waste recycling mm. container if your area recycles paper, which most of uh, them do nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it's very unique in that. Um, it's square. Mm -hmm. Thinking outside yeah, the box a little bit, exactly, it's square the totally. way that ice cream containers used to be way back in the day. Mm -hmm. So you can fit more on a shelf, you can fit more in a package, you know, you got the Ikea kind of mm -hmm. world where if you can fit more stuff in there, if it's square. Um, they are uh, sustainable forest initiative paper. So this was our effort to kind of create the most sustainable product that we could. The biodegradable sticker goes on these. Um, we, we decided not to expand our pint um, 
distribution into grocery stores uh, further than we had until we could come up with a, a packaging product that we were really excited and proud about. And that took mm -hmm. almost two years to make this. Um, they look great. They uh, can actually even just um, fold up like a cereal box when mm -hmm. you're done so the lid stays shut in your freezer. Ah. So um, we're really proud of those. They're available now in the Philadelphia area at, in Whole Foods. Wow. Um, and we are constantly growing the uh, distribution of them. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited. Six flavors, four dairy, two non-dairy flavors. Tell so, me more. I mean, yeah. this, this is where passion and business intersect. Totally, um, you, yeah, you talked about that. jazz, you talked about cooking, you talked about a hobby. Um, your flavors are unique. So say the six flavors really slowly. Sure. And maybe a little story behind it. Sure. Uh, well, the six flavors we're offering in grocery stores are vanilla cardamom cream, mm -hmm. chocolate salt malt, uh, smoked cinnamon, mm -hmm. Earl Grey tea and sriracha hot sauce. Uh, and then we have two non-dairy flavors, a uh, chocolate salt malt, which is one of our most popular flavors, and a non-dairy version, and a speculoos cookie, which is like a graham cracker, ginger snap type uh, European cookie. Mm -hmm. And um, our flavors are very unique. Um, we uh, like to take combinations of things that might not necessarily go together. We like to take uh, things that taste like something else. So in our shops, we make a pizza ice cream. We make a everything oh. bagel ice cream. <laughs> um, we do some very strange and modern twists on um, your, con you know, your traditional chocolates and vanillas and, and so forth. Um, so we're really trying to modernize it, take it into the, the new era of uh, creativity and, and pushing flavor experimentation to the limits, or at least what we find humorous <laughs> and fun and worth That's trying out. And, and that is one of the things I recognize. When folks go to your website, I mean, humor and fun, or certainly different. Um, you're, not your, you're not the Dolly Madison ice cream of Philadelphia yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, Philadelphia has a really, really rich ice cream history. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to you know, build on that and expand upon that and, and sort of take it into the next generation, even further outer space, wherever it might go. So we like to play. <laughs> with, uh, you know, we think that this is in some ways a, a harmless prank that, mm -hmm. you know, is uh, something that we can um, just have fun with, show our mm -hmm. sense of humor, make people laugh, create new memories, be creative. Um, we, like to, we like to say that we like to leave people confused and grateful. So at first they're mm -hmm. kind of like, mm -hmm. hmm, I'm not really sure that I like that. What is that going to taste like? And then they taste it and they're like, oh, I'm thankful that I took that step and made that leap to this unknown thing. <laughs> um, so that's really what we're striving to go for in our product and our, and our uh, flavors. And uh, when, when we can hit that nail, we're really happy. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, one, one question that I often ask people towards the end of an interview is, when you focus your energy for action, what happens in your world and ours? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel that um, action comes a lot in, in planning. I'm a pretty natural planner. Um, so we've been planning this for a long time, uh, and we're, we're very, very happy with the time and energy that went into that. It's, it seems like uh, it was a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, anticlimactic when we actually, actually saw them on the shelves because it was just how much time and energy was put into all the planning and the processes of getting this product out there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, hopefully this will... Uh, expand beyond the regions that we've currently been in, um, bring that happiness and that joy and that feeling and that excitement of trying something new to more people. And that's really what we're going for. Totally, totally exciting. And I love, um, okay, 100%, and this is intentional, uh -huh. fantasy. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you close that lid and seal it up, it says 100% fantasy, just, just for fun. In a box, fantasy yeah. <laughs> in a box. Who knew, exactly. right? <laughs> Who knew? Well, tell us a little bit more about, you know, you have ice cream is a feeling. You mentioned the word experience a few times. Um, you're very thoughtful in how you're not only uh, source the box, but how you really took this hobby and source the ice cream without divulging anything confidential. Um, you know, what were some of your, your thoughts behind that? Yeah, um, well, we wanted to, you know, make a 
really great tasting product, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so we are using the best dairy that we could find. It's um, you know all natural, um, grass fed cows from mm -hmm. South Central Pennsylvania. We have a great partnership with our dairy, Trickling Springs Creamery in Chambersburg, PA, and. Um, it's a 16% butterfat, super premium ice cream. It's the real deal. Wow. We wanted to go for that creaminess, that richness, that taste. And again, building on the sort of uh, rich Philadelphia ice cream tradition. You know, Bassett started here. It's the oldest ice cream company in America. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack and Jill, Turkey Hill, all these, you know, this is a rich dairy area. All those things um, we wanted to build upon and, and, and take into a modern era. And, um, also really make the flavors of our ice cream stand out so that when you, when we are saying this flavor is Earl Grey tea and sriracha hot sauce, you are tasting both of, both of those things. Who would and have you can thought Earl that. Grey, I think, I know. conservative and exactly. sriracha is yeah. like totally burst in your mouth. Burst in your mouth. And that's right. what we, were, we call it flavor blasting. <laughs> and that's what we wanted to, every flavor to just be um, blasted and be an experience. And um, we also wanted it to be for everyone. You know, mm -hmm. we wanted, we knew that there's a growing market for non-dairy and vegan products. We know mm -hmm. that there's a lot of people dealing with um, dietary issues out there that might be lactose intolerant. And so we focused uh, early on on making a non-dairy product that was really um, good. And uh, we did a lot of experimenting and came up with that. And um, it's a uh, hundred percent. Uh, it's a it's coconut cream. It's agave mm. syrup sweetened. It's just as rich and fatty as our re regular ice creams. A lot of people roll their eyes when you say it's vegan. It's not going to taste the same way. It's going to taste icy. It's going to taste airy. But it really is like the real deal, and we're we're really proud of that. So those flavors are are completely unique in and of of themselves. And um, hopefully we'll, one day we'll be able to make a, a sugar-free or non-sugar added mm -hmm. product just because oh. we believe ice cream should be for everyone and everyone should mm -hmm. be able to get to um, enjoy it. Um, so that's on the, um, the goals list right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Haven't gotten, gotten that perfect recipe yet. But um, yeah, we, we do take a lot of time and careful consideration. We are very conscious of our community partners. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we're, we work with local coffee roasters. We work with local growers. We work with um, doing a lot of collaborative efforts. Mm -hmm. uh, th mm -hmm. This business has been very collaborative from the beginning. Um, by intention and by necessity, we just mm -hmm. sort of needed the help of other people in order to get our product known and get out there. So um, that's continued to be sort of a driving factor in how we innovate and come up with new things. Great, great words. I want to touch on that briefly before we go. Innovation and then also planning and experience. When you put those together, one of the things, and you talked about collaboration, you in fact collaborate with your customer base because people can be part of your testing process. Sure. Can you talk to us just a little bit about that uh, before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, I, I think that the innovation part of this, and especially just in terms of flavor creation, has mm -hmm very much been built in and ingrained into the business and in fact I'm trying to figure out kind of new ways of sparking it up a little bit so it's not like the Tuesday meeting where we come up with three oh new no 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 anything. that would not be you um, <laughs> well it, so sometimes it's gotten like that and, that, and that, because we've we've put things in place where we're going to say we're going to make X amount of flavors for this time period and we mm -hmm. want we want to get them out there um, and one thing that we do is we we do a um, subscription service in the fall and uh, fall and winter, mm -hmm. so um, it works like a like a CSA, like a community supported agriculture. We call it the CSIC, the community supported ice cream. <laughs> um, and you sign up for three months, and uh, each month you get two new flavors that we're testing out, that we're experimenting, that are you know going to be something that we want our customers' feedback on. And mm -hmm. the the subscribers are excited because they're getting to taste the product for the first time. They're getting right. to offer their feedback. They're getting it. Uh, at a convenient time and location for them. So um, that's one way that we've sort of built in some innovation. We, we get to directly interact with our customers and find out what they like and see what, wor what works and what doesn't, what's popular and what's not, oh, and, cool. and still push ourselves to keep creating. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Martin, you know, 
This has been very, very exciting. I appreciate you sharing your story. Um, I'm looking forward to being one of your subscribers. Um, we talked about that last year, and I don't know where the winner went, um, <laughs> but uh, I've got your number. I know your <laughs> website this is going to happen. And um, it's been fun seeing you around town. I, I saw um, your, your team recently mm -hmm. at the Philly Farm Fest. And I know you're heading down to Baltimore and D.C., so yep. best yeah. wishes thank as you, you so continue much. to grow. Thank you. So thank you. We really appreciate you being part of the Significant TV Experience. I'm Fran McNeil, your host. And our guest today was Martin Brown with Little Baby's Ice Cream. Thanks again for watching, and join us next time.